Jerry at Fair Oaks. returned to Rome. He returned as a conqueror and became dictator for life. Now Cassius, heading a group of powerful men, became jealous, and their dissension resulted in the plot to assassinate Caesar. Hey, Jerry. Yeah, what? Only a couple of more minutes now. Hey, do you think their list will be posted? Sure. They said it would be by the time class was out. Uh, Cadet Dugan. Yes, sir? Tell me now, just when did that take place? The day, the month, and the year? I'm sorry, Professor, I didn't get the question. Were you paying attention? Yes, sir. The question was, when was Caesar assassinated by Brutus? Uh, let's see, uh, Brut, Brut, uh, uh, that was 49 B.C., uh, then in 55 B.C. Uh, come, come, Dugan, that was part of my lecture yesterday. Yes, sir, I, I know it was. Well? 55 and then... I don't remember, sir. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry. Was it 24 B.C.? You're just guessing now, my boy. I'm sorry you missed that part of the lecture. It's very important that you remember all the dates. <clears throat> well, time's up. I'll have to dismiss the class now. But I'll be very glad to help you, Dugan. We'll go over what I spoke about yesterday. Uh, you just remain seated. The rest of you may go now. Yeah, I'll see you in the hallway by the bulletin board, Jerry. And try to hurry it up. Too bad you got stuck. I'll be out of here in no time. Watch me. I gotta find out if my name's on the list. Okay. I'll be waiting for there, you. Yeah, now, Dugan, if you'll just come up to my desk here. Yeah? Yes, sir. Uh, just pull that chair up. Sit here next to me. Yes, sir. Now then, in stressing these things, I have a very definite reason. If you're to get the most out of the history of the Roman Empire, you must remember all of the dates. They have so much bearing on the ensuing events. Uh, you understand that, don't you? Oh, yes, sir, but I thought that... Now, just a moment. I'm fully aware, Dugan, that these things may not seem to be of any real importance to you at the time. Oh, no, but sir, but what I wanted to know... Let me finish. Yes, sir. In later years, you will no doubt come to feel as I do. Why, to be without a perfect understanding of ancient history is a crime. Yes, I'll go so far as to say that. To face the world and its problems without it is like a carpenter trying to build a house without tools. The knowledge is here for you, Dugan, and I want so much to help you get it. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, now to get back. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, what was the question you fell down on? Uh, you asked me when uh, Caesar was assassinated. Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, that's the question. Now, think hard. Was it 44 B.C.? Yes, that's it. 44 B.C. See there? You recognize the date right off. Yes, sir, I... Just couldn't think of it a while ago. But, Professor Custis, yeah, we'll I'd like... will take one thing at a time. Now, uh, do you recall the day and the month? Please, sir, I'd like to ask I'll you... I'll answer all of your questions, Dugan. Now, let's get this date first. Now, was it March? March. Was... Yeah, I think it was. That's right. It was March. Now, do you recall the date? Yes, sir, I've got it now. The 15th of March, 44 B.C. Right. Absolutely correct. Now, you see, it wasn't so hard. Try to remember that now. Yes, sir, I will. Now, may I... Yes, yes, what's your question now? Well, sir, they're posting the list on the bulletin board. 
Maybe it's up already. The list? What list? The list of cadets that have been picked to take the writing test for the mounted drill team. I don't believe I understand you, Dugan. Uh, the writing team? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I see. Oh, oh, the mounted drill team. Yes, yes. I wanted to see if... Well, I I'm anxious to find out if I was picked. Naturally. Yes. Yes, you would be. Uh, I think it's very fine that you boys take an active interest in, uh, in the outdoor sports. Yes, sir. May I please... I was you? somewhat of an athlete myself when I was your age. Uh, yes, but that's going back a few years. Uh, quite a few years. Almost like ancient history. I <laughs> hope I made it. What's that? Oh, nothing, sir. I was just saying I, I hope I made it. Do you think your name might be on the list? Yes, sir, I do. Well, run along then and find out. If I was in your shoes, I could hardly wait. Thank you, sir. I hope you're fortunate, Dugan. Thank you, Professor. Come on, hurry it up. Woo! Gee, I thought I'd never get out of there. Let's take a look at that list. Is my name up there? Let's see. <laughs> hey, is it? Right up on top. <laughs> I knew it would be. Hey, wait a minute. Let's see who the others are. Red Morrison and Paul Warren. Mm -hmm. Did you notice you're the only plebe on the list? Yeah, I made it. <laughs> so far, so good. Hey, what's next? Well, read the rest of that notice. Oh, yeah. As soon as the time for the test is determined, cadets whose names appear on this list will be notified direct. Sergeant Alden. <laughs> what's that grin on your face for? Oh, well, wouldn't you be grinning, too? <laughs> you just bet I would, Jerry. <laughs> hey, come on, let's go over to the room. Okay. Did you notice Red's name was up there? Mm hmm I wonder how come. Why not? Well, I thought when he was taken off the polo team, he was all through riding. Mm -hmm. No, he's worked off all of his demerits and been reinstated as a cadet officer. There's no reason why he shouldn't try out as long as he can ride. Of course, his position on the polo team's gone. Hey, how's Warren doing? Did you hear? Mm, yes, yeah, seems to me I did. Let's see, who was it? Oh, I think Ted Metcalf told me that Paul was doing all right. Too bad you didn't make it. Oh, I don't care. I'd just soon be on the mounted drill team. Yeah, you might get into polo later on. Sure, maybe. Oh, wait a minute. Where are you going? Well, while we're so close, I want to see if there's any mail for me. I'll look for you, too. <laughs> okay. But you didn't have to run away like that. I've got one. Oh, good. But there wasn't anything for you. Well, that's okay. I wasn't expecting anything. Yeah, this is a nice fat letter from Mr. Randall. Well, aren't you going to open it? Hey, let's go uh, over to one of the alumni benches. Okay. It's your letter. I can't read while I'm walking. i got to sit down. <laughs> kind of fussy, aren't you? Well, can you read while you're walking? Sure. Yeah, but not as good as standing still or sitting down. <laughs> All right, you win. I wonder what he's got to say. I haven't had a letter for about a week. So that's right, you haven't. Not since the one when he turned me down about the money to loan to Mac. Yeah, well, it's just as well it turned out that way now. What do you mean? Well, Mac might have spent the money and got his working model all ready before he found out his idea was already invented. Yeah, I see what you mean. And boy, would Mr. Randall laugh at me if that happened. Yeah, I'll say he would. Bumps used to always say to me that things happen for the best. <laughs> I guess that's a good way to feel. Sure it is. Well, come on and sit down while I read my letter. You gonna read it out loud? Well, do you want to hear it? Mm-hmm, go ahead. Okay. Uh, dear Jerry, sorry to have kept you waiting for a letter so long, but we've been very busy. Just finished six one-night stands in a row, and you know what that is. What is it, Jerry? Oh, one-night stands means that the circus just plays in a town one day and then moves right on to the next town. Oh, I see. Go ahead. And you know what that is? Uh, uh, Bumps and Jason and Patsy are all fine and asked to be remembered. Rags is fine, too, and Bumps asked me to tell you that he's doing two new tricks with him. Some new kind of somersault tricks. I haven't had a chance to see them yet. I was very glad to learn, Jerry, that you tried out for the polo team. What experience you received with the circus and the tips Whitey gave you about horses should prove of great value. Uh, Whitey was the man in charge of the horses for the circus? Uh-huh. Hey, let me finish this now. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, by the way, uh, Splendor has grown so big you won't know him anymore. <laughs> He's not the little coal he was when you left. Uh, that's the coal I broke in, Lee. Oh. I was the first one that ever rode him. Say, have you got a picture of him, Jerry? No, I haven't. I wish I did have, though. Hey, wait a minute. Uh... Must hurry this along now, but before I close, I want to tell you that I'm sending you a surprise. I might add a big surprise. It should reach you about the same time this letter gets there. I hope you're pleased, Jerry. Be sure to write and let me know how you like it. With all good wishes from your circus friends and myself, Sam Randall. Hmm. wonder what the surprise is. He says I uh, might add a, a big surprise. Hey, maybe it's a package or something. 
Oh, it didn't look for a package. Hey, come on, let's go back over to Custis Hall and see if it's there yet. Okay. He said it should be here by the same time the letter gets here. Well, maybe it is. Well, I sure hope so. Yeah, I wonder what it is. A big surprise. What could it be? Hey, come on, let's hurry. It's probably a box of something. A box of what? Search me. But whatever it is, it's most likely there on that rack for packages under the mailbox. <laughs> Boy, this sure looks like my lucky day. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? All except having to stay after class. Oh, I meant to ask you. What did old Custy say to you? You didn't get called down, did you? No, he was nice. Any other time, I'd have been glad to stay and talk with him. I like Professor Custis. Oh, yeah, all the fellas like old Stormy Weather. Did you know he's got a lifetime job here at Fair Oaks? No, is that so? Mm-hmm. You knew Custis Hall was named after him, didn't you? Uh-huh, but I don't know why. Well, Professor Custis was a lifelong friend of Colonel Montgomery Davis, uh, the man that founded Fair Oaks. Custis Hall was the first building erected at Fair Oaks and named after him by Colonel Davis in tribute to his friend. Gee, that's nice, isn't it? Mm-hmm, sure is. Oh, boy, I sure hope that surprise package is here now. You don't know for sure it is a package. Well, whatever it is, I hope it's here. <laughs> I do, too. You even got me anxious about it. Well, if it isn't here now, I guess it won't come until tomorrow, will it? No, that's right. There won't be another mail until, well, until tomorrow morning. Well, there's the rack for the packages. Yeah. I don't see any package. I don't either. Say, I got an idea. How about asking Major Davis? I mean, if it came registered or special delivery, he might have it in his office. Come on, his office is right over here. Okay. Well, well, Cadet Dugan. Yes, sir. You're just the man I'm looking for. I was just about to send an orderly to find you. Sergeant Alden called me a few minutes ago and told me he was very anxious for you to come right out to the stable. I'll go right out, sir. Uh, now, uh, wait a minute. I'd like to go along with you. I'll just get my cap here. Well, there we are. Uh, say, I'll see you over at the room, Jerry. Oh, don't you want to come along, Lee? Mm. Well, sir, if it's all well, right. Certainly, certainly. Come along with us. Excuse me, Major. Yes? Uh, did Sergeant Alden say what he wanted to see me about? He said it was very urgent, Jerry. Very urgent. Hmm. Gee, I wonder what it could be. 